Hello everybody, Adam at developphp.com here with another PHP website programming tutorial. In this one I'm going to knock out two birds with one stone by teaching you about associative arrays and in doing that we'll learn how to access the user agent variable for any machine that's accessing our web pages. And just so you have a really good idea of what we're about to learn how to program here's what the finished product will give you. At Web Intersect I allow people to post we call them blabs, anything they want when they do post you can see here I'm gathering the users operating system so you can see John is using Windows XP and he's using browser of Google Chrome this guy's using Windows 7 he's on Internet Explorer I whipped out my little smartphone and then right before I made that comment on my smartphone I made a comment from Google Chrome uh, using my Windows 7 machine so it's, it's I, I also noticed that Facebook sometimes will gather if you're coming from a smartphone they'll gather that information and then they'll list it that you posted from Samsung mobile or iPhone mobile or whatever alright so back at develop PHP we're gonna go in, into the learning PHP section right here in the top near the top the variables section global variables you'll see we have some global variables down at the bottom there the one we want is the user agent actually I'll just grab all that code and remove what I don't need. I'm gonna fire up my favorite HTML text editor. Make sure I save this file as a PHP file. Save as get user browser and OS. Make sure it's .php, remember. If you don't have it saved as a .php file, it won't process the PHP within it. Now let's put that code in. Let me zoom out a bit. That's everything I just grabbed from develop PHP. I'm going to remove everything I don't need because I want just the user agent there. Now, back at develop PHP, in the learn PHP section, we have arrays. You can learn all about working with arrays from very simple to multi-dimensional if you want to go that far. But here we're going to go to looping and iterating over array data in PHP. I'm going to grab this little bit of code as well without the opening and closing PHP tags. I'm going to sync it right into that script that I'm starting on here. Let's get rid of all these comments and this. Let's just get rid of that for now. This we're going to change to a K. Just remember that means key. This we're going to change to a V. That one means value. And this is going to be browser array. So let's change that to browser array. And This is the one we'll use see which browser the site visitor is using to access the page. And we're going to have another for each loop that's going to evaluate what operating system they have. Now, this is a one-dimensional... Actually, let's make sure this says browser array. Okay, that's our browser array. And let's remove all of the items from it. Now, before I remove those items, take a look at them. There's just items in there delimited by comma or separated by commas. So you got one, two, three, four, five items in this array. This is a one-dimensional simple array as simple as it gets in PHP. So this is a very basic one-dimensional array. Now we need an associative array because in one-dimensional arrays like this you can't have distinct keys that you want to set a distinct label for a key. This one's always going to be zero. This one's always going to be one, two, three, and four. All arrays automatically by default will start with an index of zero. So the keys for this would be zero equals milk, one equals cheese, two equals eggs, three equals cereal, four equals jelly. So you have key and value pairs. With an associative array I can say M82 equals milk, CH456789 equals cheese, EG 452 equals eggs. So I can give it like store brand codes if I wanted to use as the key. I'm going to show you that right now. I'll stop talking about it and let me demonstrate it. Let's remove those. Let's bring that down a couple of lines, the parentheses. And within the parentheses here is where we're going to put each item within our associative array. So the first one is going to be, let's make Windows Mobile. So in between single quotes, I'm going to type in Windows Mobile. 
Now I'm going to type in an equal sign and a greater than sign. And on the other side, another set of single quotes and a comma. Between these single quotes, I'm going to put IE mobile, which is in the user agent string. So basically, this user agent string, let's change this to say agent so it makes more sense. There, agent string is going to be a big string of code that's really not human readable and it might have if somebody's using a Windows mobile device it'll say IE mobile in that string but we don't want it to say IE mobile when we output it we want it to say Windows mobile so that's why we're using this associative array that way we can find values within that user agent string and then use a different label that we really want to represent that value now what we have to do is stick some more in here for Android, iPhone and all the others. Okay, now I have all the values that I want to evaluate for initially and you can take it upon yourself to gather as many more as you want and you'll notice that the last one does not have a comma like the others. There's no comma on that one because that's the last item in the array. Those commas are separating the key value pairs. Now all I have to do is evaluate within this for each loop. Let's bring this up into view. So in each item in this array is going to be accessed through this loop. So the first one in the array is going to be the Windows Mobile, i.e. Mobile key value pair. So when that passes through this array, Windows Mobile, this value here, is going to be placed into this K variable, the key. So this K is going to hold, it's going to be a container for the value of Windows Mobile. And this V is going to be a virtual container for where it says IE mobile which is the string value so each time each one of these items passes through this each one gets placed into these temporary K and V values so inside of this for each loop we can do a simple evaluation let's say if within this if statement nest here we're going to have pregmatch function and what pregmatch function does is it checks to see if the substring that you're looking for happens to be in the string that we're evaluating alright so let's pop that in place and let me explain it to you here what we're saying is if there's a match for this value that's coming through the loop and the agent string which is the agent global variable that we assigned here to this variable named agent so basically if IE mobile in the first pass of the loop if IE mobile is seen in that agent string then we know that this person is using Windows mobile so at that point we break right here we put in the break and what that'll do is if it happens say this person is using Android our little match finds that this person is using Android we don't want the the rest of the array to keep going and checking because it's unnecessary and it's using system resources that you can save. So once it gets to this value and that's found, or if say if it's Firefox, it gets to that value and it's found, you break this for each loop from running any further. So it'll stop right there and it'll, it, this K will be assigned a value of that item found. So K and V wind up being the items that are found in the match. Then we say else if it's not found at all K is going to be browser unknown because because it wasn't found in our list and like I said you can scour the web go through all kind of lists for user agents to see every single one you can probably get a good list of 20 in there if you do hard work but the way I've set it up here, all you gotta do is add to it. Now you can say at the bottom under here, we can start it, make a new variable called browser equals browser equals k, and then we just you can echo out for testing right now. Echo this browser variable, and that's going to show you exactly what browser you're using when it echoes to the page there. You can see that's not much script. It's pretty compact. Alright, let's test that. 
and mine I'm gonna test in Google Chrome so it should output to me that I'm using Google Chrome because this string of Chrome will be found and it's very important let me mention to you guys if you're looking for Google Chrome and Safari users make sure Chrome is before Safari in this array if you put Safari in front of Chrome even people using Google Chrome it'll show them using as they're using Safari okay you can see we have success here in our scripting because I'm using Google Chrome to access the page and it's telling me that I'm using Google Chrome our array and loop worked just nicely I'm gonna grab that whole URL I'm gonna open up another browser here open Firefox and there it is it outputs Firefox if I was on a smartphone my little Samsung it would tell me Android mobile so now back at the script it's very simple now to take this existing code and now pluck out the operating system so now we have the browser set into a variable called K at the end of the script here and we put that K into a variable called browser so we can just take all this code right above the echo there the whole array and everything right here at the bottom let's not echo that there anymore and put a little code comment that says so now we're gonna get the user operating system right there let's press paste control V so there's basically a copy of what we scripted above but we're gonna change this from saying browser array to say OS array. We can change these values here for operating systems. So here let's just change that to say OS array. K and V is going to stay the same. That's the same. That's the same. And let's just say instead of browser unknown, unknown OS. and instead of this saying browser let's make this say OS so at the end of the script we'll have a variable ready here for the browser that we can use display a store whatever and at the end of this little set of code that runs we'll have a variable called OS so you can actually put those together at web intersect I combine those two variables with a colon between them and I sync it into one database field or you can choose to keep yours in, diff in two different say, database fields one for browser one for OS so now all I have to do is change these values and there they are so those are the values for the OS array and what I did was I just found the ones that I thought would be the most popular put them in the list like I said with the browsers just like the browsers there's more that you can put in here research and find all of them and get them in there but these are the most popular ones and I think if somebody's not using this anything in this list it'd be an oddity very rare situation most people are using things within this list that I have here so basically what happens if in their user agent string if we see win 98 or the word windows space 98 we know that they're using windows 98 if we find Windows 2000 or Windows NT 5.0 we know they're using Windows 2000 and so on and so forth and you can see here that you can put in multiple values for the value section of this array that way if either one of these are found if it finds Windows XP in the list or if it finds Windows NT 5.1 we know that it's Windows XP so we put it there and like all these Windows versions might be seen in the string if any one of those are seen in the string we know they're using Windows NT 4.0 so basically that's how it works you already understand this if condition with pragmatch and everything that's going on there so now we can output OS and browser together and I never did show you the agent so let's pop in this code here at the end we're gonna echo out agent which is the raw line that we gathered at the very beginning to do all these evaluations with so what will output to the page is this static line saying whatever we want there PHP tutorial then the next line will show 
the actual user agent for whoever's accessing your page. Then the next line, here's your two little variables. You got OS and you got browser. You can do anything you want with those variables at line 47. Right when you gather that OS variable up, you can do anything you want with those. Put them in a database, display them, just leave them in variable form to display them down in the HTML section of your page if you have that. And basically that's how it's done. So that shows you how to use associative arrays and using a little bit of control flow logic to grab the match so we can check to see if something is in a string or not using preg match. Right when the item is found we break the for each loop so it doesn't process any further unnecessarily and we know the output of k is going to be that last match found. If no matches are found in the whole entire array k is going to be a value of unknown OS. Same for the browser. Okay and here's the finished product of the script you can see the dynamic variables are right here. Google Chrome is the browser I'm using and Windows 7. This one says Internet Explorer Windows 7. Very good. Alright, now you can see why I said you want to put Chrome before Safari in your list. because You can see that I'm clearly using Google Chrome here. But if you're in the script, if you happen to put Safari in front of Google Chrome in this array, it'll look like Google Chrome users are using Safari, but Safari will find a match. If somebody's using Chrome, Safari will be found in that string, as you can clearly see here. I'm using Google Chrome. See how it says Safari right there in the string? Because they both use the Gecko type browser. So basically that's why I mentioned to put Google Chrome in front or ahead of Safari within your browser array. Okay, I hope that helps some of you guys out understand arrays a little bit more and how to access the data and loop through all the items in your array to make matches or if you want to output the data into variables, whatever you want to do. You can get all that data you need. And we'll see you next lesson.